TLDD stocks dropped an alarming 18%, its biggest decline since January 1990. That's after it reported 2015 net income that fell 35%. PLDD Chair and CEO Manny Panglian says the company needs to reset the dial. Joining us to tell us what that means is Winston DeMarillo, Chief Strategy Officer of PLDD. Hi, Winston. So what does it mean when he says reset the dials? Well, reset the dial. So let me just give you a quick background. So uh, about the same time last year, we started talking about a digital pivot for PLDT. Yes. Now, just to kind of give you a full picture of it, uh, you know, if you look at 2015 from a semestral standpoint, the first part of the year was a little bit challenging for us. And that's kind of when we announced our digital pivot. And towards the end of the year, we actually started to recover uh, in terms of growth. That's why if you think about it from a core income standpoint, we actually did, did beat our expectations a little bit at 35 billion. Um, what we wanted to do and what reset meant for PLDT is we wanted to build the business towards the future. And if you look at it, that, that actually meant a, a rebasing of a revenue mix from voice, SMS, and data, pointing towards high growth areas like data, and then building towards uh, businesses that would be more important for us in the long term, three to five years from now. So from a reset standpoint, we have to acknowledge that there, there are businesses that are in, in mature and declining, and we wanted to make sure that we're not building our business based on that, and, and in fact, investing into businesses that have growth, like data and digital services. But you're looking at a three-year process. We're saying that it's going to happen in two to three years. Now, that's a pretty long time to ask investors to wait, right? Well, it's going to happen in three years from a total life cycle standpoint towards where you see us consistently growing. But we're not you know, going to start, or we have started, in fact, at the second semester of 2015. Right, so what we're trying to set expectation is in order for us to have very good long-term prospects, we have to invest today, right? And what we will do is we will constantly update our investors quarter by quarter in terms of the progress. But can we today. expect to move faster? You can expect us to be more deliberate in what we're going to try to do. Uh, you, can, you can expect us to be a little bit more pointed in, in the directionality of the business. Now, he also mentioned that PLDD will be very, very different after three years, but will it still be the giant that it well, is Well, it should be different because the industry will be very different in three years. It will still be the giant that you can expect it to be uh, because while you see mobile and internet uh, business, mobile internet business force being challenged, you still have very strong anchor points in PLDT. For instance, our home business is still growing big and we're dominant in that space, and our fixed line business is still also uh, strong and continues to be strong. But even profit guidance for this year will be 20%, will be a 20% fall in profit. Do we expect this to continue and for how long? You, ex you expect that to be rebased and reset for this year, and that should be a, a better picture from a strategic strategic standpoint going forward, right? What we wanted to do is we wanted to give ourselves headroom so that we can invest properly in the growth businesses. And that's really what the, the goal is there. And what's really um, exciting for us, if you, if, you can, if you can consider it that way from an employee standpoint, is that our chairman and now CEO, Mani Pangilinan, and is really more focused on let's build the business right, right? Let's not worry about the short term. Let's invest in the medium and the long term. But looking at it now, you're also looking at a loss in about 5 million subscribers. And this without new competition yet. Let's just take a listen at what um, CEO Manny Panglin had to say about Competitor Globe. I think they took the, uh, their digital pivot uh, three or two, five years earlier than we did. Um, so they were there ahead of us in the process, ahead of the curve. And I think, you know, they've done a good job. Uh, in terms of, of uh, transforming the network, um, doing their uh, onboarding processes better than we have, and generally um, providing the appropriate digital experience that the subscriber wants. So those three funds are very important. The truth is we're behind the curve. What's the plan to win back these subscribers? Well, the plan is to win them back, period, and then grow uh, additional but subscriber how? and additional business. So first of all, network, right? That's a fundamental of any telco, right? And if you look at one of the announcements we did in this earnings report, uh, there's a study by an independent group called Open, uh, Open Signal that basically is starting to indicate that uh, PLDT is coming back in terms of the quality of network we have. We're, we're now, we won eight of the you know, 10 categories in terms of quality of downloads, latency, and availability of the network. So first things first, right? Network has to be fixed. 
And we're very excited about what our network team has accomplished so far. So that particular piece, I would say progress has been very good. And again, independent third party. Um, uh, so we will NSS wait to will see if the subscribers do come back to that. But now your, your CapEx remains to be escalated. Yes. 43 billion pesos, same as last year. Where is and that And we'll going? continue to be aggressive in that. So as you have seen, networks already in good shape and progressing well. We still want to invest further more in CapEx, primarily because we're not happy to just recover our, share, our, our lost subscribers, right? We want to provide them new and differentiated services. So beyond network, we're going to invest in platforms, and we're going to invest in content, and then applications, and then transaction platforms. So, uh, you know, when we're talking about the three years, you know, in the first year or two, we're going to recover and regain our position as a telco player. But we're also looking forward into the future where telco is not just telco, it's also a digital service provider's transaction, and we're investing in that now. Speaking of investments, you have Rocket Internet, which you expect to bring in a little more losses this year. So why hold on? Well, um, we're now at the stage. So first of all, the investment in Rocket uh, is, is a strategic investment more than a fiduciary investment, right? So we invested in Rocket because of their ability to help open uh, new digital services to emerging markets. And that's what PLDT's um, view in terms of investing in Rocket. We want to take the advantage we have in you know, our smart money now called Paymaya and all the, the technologies that we're building in Voyager and, help, and work with Rocket to open new markets for us. Right? It's a growth opportunity for PLDT. So our investment in Rocket Internet is centered on that strategy. Right? So we weren't really focused on, on the, the financial aspects of it, although we didn't evaluate it like anybody else. Although the investors would always be looking at the financial well, absolute, aspects absolutely. of that investment so it's, it's, as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate where Rocket is at. We, we believe in Rocket's prospect in the long term. I think they're doing what they're doing in their financial moves also to prepare themselves to, to greater growth, right? And, and there's their short term and medium term implications for that and we're all living to, to the, the, you know, the, the outcome of that particular move. Thank you very much, Winston, from, from walking us through that.